only hours before his betrayal, arrest, trial, crucifixion, and death, Jesus has a final meal with his closest friends. The way John's gospel tells the story, Jesus uses this time to prepare the disciples for how things are about to change. Immediately before today's reading, he has said to them, I am with you only a little while longer. Given the intervening millennia between then and now, and the fact we already know how the story ends, we hardly take notice of the gravity of the announcement. But what about the disciples? The people who had left behind communities, vocations, friends, families for the sake of following Jesus all this time. I can only imagine the feelings of denial, anxiety, and confusion which must, must have raced through their minds and then pierced their hearts and then sank to that sickening feeling in the pits of their stomachs. Then came the questions. What do we do now? How should we respond? Why is this happening? Which way do we go from here? All of the questions humans normally ask in times of uncertainty must have rushed into their heads and then spewed out of their mouths. Remember, we're reading the story. The disciples were living it in real time with no comprehension, no comprehension at all about what was coming next. Peter speaks first with his usual bravado, proclaiming his fealty and dedication to the very end, only to be told of his inherent fickleness which would be revealed by the crowing of a rooster in a few short hours. The emotions in the room intensify. What Jesus says next and what we've heard this morning are words which have encouraged, supported, and comforted followers of Jesus from that very first Monday Thursday until right this very moment. Many of us have read these words in times of difficulty and distress. Others of us have heard them read at funerals of family or friends. Plenty of us have clung to them when our own personal anxieties have threatened to overwhelm us with despair. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. I don't know about you, but my heart has been plenty troubled these last weeks. I've asked all the practical questions and plenty of impractical ones too. What now? What will help? What won't? When will it be over? How can we move forward? What data do I trust? Who do I believe? Which way do I go? During this time, I've found myself returning to these words of Jesus over and over, not as pietistic pablum, but as a strong medicine to fortify my soul. You see, to believe, to trust in Jesus is not about ignoring what's going on in the world around us. Rather, as people of faith, to trust in Jesus grounds us in the right now, in this time, in this place, 
we can face into our uncertainties in the assurance that we are never alone and never will be. You know the place where I'm going, Jesus says to his friends. And Thomas, God, I love him, speaks for us all, who's, speaks to everyone who's ever been lost. He, he says, Lord, we don't know where we're going. How can we know the way? I've often imagined there was a goodly pause between Thomas' question and Jesus' answer. The question Thomas asks must be honored as one that comes from a desperate heart in a desperate moment. This isn't a hypothetical exercise. This is an existential crisis. Which way now? I am the way, Jesus responds. You know the way, Thomas, because you know me. The center of our faith, the foundation of our trust, isn't in the final analysis a set of ideals, a philosophical system, a formula for good behavior, or some magisterial text. Our center, our starting place, and our ending place as Christians is Jesus. My dad, who died in 2012, came to faith in Jesus after I had left home for college. Even after his baptism, and as a good Baptist, he was put all the way under. Even after that, he was pretty quiet about what he believed because he believed living a good life was more important than talking a good game. But during his last few weeks, he and I had plenty of discussions about faith, about life, and about death. One such conversation happened maybe a month before he died. I was chatting with him on the phone about nothing in particular when he abruptly changed the subject. I've been reading over in John's Gospel today, he said. You have? What have you been reading? I've been reading the 14th chapter over and over. I want you to read those first seven verses at my funeral, okay? Sure thing, Dad. Um, why are those verses important to you? Lots of reasons, Gary. Right now, I need to be reminded not to be anxious because dying is hard. I, I like the idea that God made a place for me, that God knows me as me. I keep thinking that when I close my eyes for the last time, Jesus is coming for me to take me to where he is. Don't get me wrong. I'll miss being here. But I believe I'll be with Jesus. And that gives me hope. But you know, the big thing I've been thinking about is the verse where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You know that one? Yeah, yeah Dad, I kind of know that one. He says, as I read them, here's how I understand them. Jesus ain't excluding anyone. He's asking everyone who's ever lived to take a walk with him. It's a journey, son. A journey through this life and a journey toward whatever is next. And Jesus is the guide and Jesus is the road all at the same time. Does that make any sense? Now, my dad would have never claimed to be a Bible scholar. But his homespun exegesis sure preached a word of comfort and hope to me when my heart was troubled back then. And when I reread his words in my journal a few days ago, it still does. Dear people of God, this current time is taking a toll on us in ways which can't be calculated. 
no matter how many graphs, charts, and spreadsheets are paraded before us. I suspect many of us are weary. Many of us are anxious. Some of us are angry. Others are sad. Some of us are afraid. Maybe we're all of that. Some of us are grieving the deaths of friends or loved ones. We don't know exactly what lies ahead, and our usual ways of navigating uncertainty, they just aren't working for us right now. The Christian hope has never been about being vaccinated against the vicissitudes of life. Rather, Christian hope compels us to enter into life's pain and difficulties in the assurance we are surrounded by the cloud of witnesses who have gone before us and sustained by the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. There will be times when we don't know exactly where we are. We, we won't know where we are going or even how we're going to get there. But we are never, ever lost because Jesus, Jesus is the way.